Hello, welcome back to my channel. I am 35 to 36 weeks pregnant, oh my goodness. And my daughter's a little wild child. She's almost a year and a half. She's running around, getting into everything. So this YouTube video is about how I kept in shape when I used to do Princess Jasmine at Disney World. Just over, since I've had my YouTube channel, a lot of people ask me how I lost weight in, from high school to doing the Princess Jasmine character. Baby girl, she's like jumping everywhere. I see these moms on YouTube with toddlers and their toddlers like behave so perfect it seems. <laughs> Whereas my daughter, like, she's not going to let me just film a YouTube video like that. Ariana, no. Thank you. Thank you. And I also want to say that I am not a fitness expert. I have never had a perfect body. I have never eaten perfectly. I have never exercised perfectly. I have never done everything right fitness-wise. I have never been a fitness model. I am not any kind of... I have zero certifications when it comes to fitness, but people have asked me about how I lost weight, so that's why I made this video because I did want to share what worked for me and how I um, was able to maintain my body while I did Princess Jasmine um, and how I lost weight before I got the role of Princess Jasmine just because people wanted to know, so I'm going to share and I'm going to be honest. <laughs> so I'm going to be as honest as I possibly can be. So you know, I've mentioned in some previous videos that my weight used to be, I used to be heavier in high school. Like It started when I, I was always a really skinny kid and then when I hit puberty, um, about 14, 15 years old, my weight just started going up and up and up and it didn't slow down. And all the other girls in high school seemed to stay very thin. Um, they didn't go like above 110 pounds or 115 pounds was like the maximum for girls my age. And, you know, I was afraid to play sports. I was afraid to get involved because I thought, oh, they're going to say she's fat or something. Like, I was afraid. I don't know. I just didn't have the confidence, and I should have. And I talked about in my high school experience video, you know, that I encourage girls to get active, to join a sport or an activity or something to keep your mind busy so that you're not with low self-esteem and just stuffing your face with food, you know. <laughs> and, um... You know, being a part of a club or an activity or something, it can really raise your self-esteem and your confidence and, you know, you don't think about food as much when your mind is occupied with other important things rather than just sitting in front of the TV at home like I used to do. <laughs> so that's kind of what happened to me. I was a sedentary high schooler who would come home and watch TV and eat, I think is what it was. You know, then I would feel bad about myself for not being a certain weight or looking a certain way which would only fuel my hunger to eat more. I used to beat myself up for eating pizza or chocolate or other things, milkshakes that normal teenagers would eat except that they weren't overeating it whereas I was overeating these foods, you know, everything in moderation, you know, and they were also active in sports so if they ate those things, you know, it didn't affect them as much as it did me who was sedentary. So I think those were a few of my problems. So when did the weight start to fall off of me and how. August 2002, my husband and I started dating. So, wow. And this is, we're in the month of August now. So how many years ago is that? Is that 13 years ago, I want to say? Yeah, so that's about 13 years ago that I met, that I started dating my husband. Wow. You know, my husband met me when I was at my heaviest. I, I must have been about 175 pounds and I'm five, five and a half, almost five, six. So, you know, if you're in the 5'5", five, 5'6", five, five, range, you know what 175 pounds looks like on you or you have an idea. Um, I don't know if that's obese, but it's, it's definitely not ideal weight. I couldn't go shopping at Abercrombie & Fitch if I wanted to. And, you know, I had trouble fitting into clothes that were fashionable and you know I, I couldn't just go to the mall and wear whatever and I used to always beat myself up about it and I think I was just kind of ignorant about how to be healthy and I didn't really have any good role models like fitness role models I didn't know where to look for them I didn't even know how to begin every diet that I think I had ever tried always failed I tried counting calories I tried um, I tried Weight Watchers I tried it all of uh, slim fast shakes all kinds of things nothing really worked for me. I always felt very deprived. And again, I am 35 to 36 weeks pregnant, so please don't judge my physical appearance right now. So my husband and I started dating about 13 years ago. I used to complain so much about my weight and the way I looked. I ended up going to Columbia as soon as we started dating to have my underbrite corrected because my jaw used to stick forward. So I also 
didn't feel good about my um, about my appearance because my jaw stuck forward but my husband loved me and fell for me despite being overweight and despite having a funky jaw that stuck forward so I want to encourage you girls out there who think that because you're overweight or not at your ideal weight that you'll never find a man that's not true weight can definitely have an effect on whether uh, guys are attracted to you or not but if it's the right kind of guy for you he's not going to be turned off or scared away by your imperfect physique or anything like that my husband still loved me as I was and you know he didn't even when I lost weight he still loved me and I my weight has fluctuated over the years and he has still loved me so I just want to get that out there for girls um, you know especially being pregnant like this he still loves me I hope he loves me you know our family and and um, you know he tells me I'm attractive all the time even though you know I'm totally pregnant and not at my ideal physique right now so I want to throw that out there for women who are concerned about you know catching a man and not having the perfect body and all that it's, there's so much more to true love than just your physique but anyway when I got back from Columbia even after my jaw was fixed you know which I felt better about my appearance when my jaw was properly aligned um, <laughs> And also, my it was easier to chew and bite with a with a correct jaw alignment as well. But um, I still was complaining about my appearance, um, just because I knew that I wasn't at my ideal weight. And one day we were driving in the car, and he said, "I'm tired of you complaining about your weight all the time. I'm gonna love you whether you are 500 pounds or whether you are super skinny." So you need to just accept that I'm gonna love you and I don't care how heavy you are or and I still think you're beautiful and attractive so you know if it bothers if your weight bothers you that's to do with you and you know maybe instead of stuffing yourself every time we go out you know just take a, a box to go home you know stop eating when you're full because you're always complaining that you're so stuffed after you eat why don't you just stop when you're full and it's true I had never really thought about it but I always did complain and that probably didn't sound very good to him to hear his girlfriend complaining about her weight all the time. So that was probably annoying. So me as the new girlfriend to this man, I wanted to please him. So I wanted to stop talking about it. And when you can't complain about your weight to anyone anymore, it kind of like sucks the joy out of that complaining mode. So, you know, I, I had to stop complaining about my weight. So that was step one, I think. Um, to start doing something instead of talking about how fat I was or unhappy I was He was making me stop. He told me he wasn't gonna listen to it anymore So that was a key in my losing weight um, And then he told me he was gonna love me whether I was skinny or fat. I mean what? <laughs> you know like that right there meant so much to me to know that he cared about this girl inside and not about my weight and I don't know that I had ever even loved myself that way you know because I always was judging myself by you know by what society judges which is your outward appearance and I knew I knew better than that but you know as girls sometimes we can beat ourselves up for not looking a certain way um, so he was gonna love me regardless of how I looked so then I felt like by him saying that, I felt like I could love myself regardless of how I looked too, if he loved me that way. You know, you always hear about it, you know, God loves you or, you know, so and so your family loves you, but do you love yourself? You have to love yourself enough to want to change and to want to stop complaining and to want to do something about it. And just loving yourself is huge. Like, I don't know, so that was a big deal. And that was also part of what helped me to lose weight because we all know kind of what to do, you know, don't overeat and exercise. But there's emotional things inside that we have to fix as well. And um, for me, that was, those were part of my problems was that I wasn't loving myself and I was just complaining about it and not doing anything about it. Daddy. Yeah. And when he was telling me these things, I didn't even, the idea of working at Disney was not even on my brain. It wasn't even on the radar. Um, very shortly after he did buy us tickets to like an annual pass to go to Disney. But even when we had that annual pass to go to Disney, um, I still had never even thought about being a princess or a character just because I wasn't I didn't even have the ideal weight. I didn't even realize that I could even apply for a job like that or have a job like that. It still was kind of 
If you would have told me when I started dating my husband that I was gonna be Princess Jasmine at Disney World soon, I would be like, what? I, I would have been over the moon, I would have thought, but how, like, how can I lose, what? like, I wouldn't, you would have made my year. Like, it would have been the best news ever because I would have been like, well, I'm gonna be, how on earth am I gonna be able to fit into that costume and look good in it? Like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have even, not known what to say to you if you would have told me that. So I was 19 when I started dating my husband and I was 21 when Disney hired me. So I slowly lost weight over the course of two years. It didn't happen overnight. It happened over a two year period. And I think in the past, when I was in high school, I would get so frustrated because I would try so hard to lose weight and, you know, I might lose five pounds or something, you know, be good for a week and then, you know, give up because it got too hard. The idea of being patient to see results just did not compute. I guess I always wanted fast results and I wanted them to last, but that's not how weight loss is. Weight loss does not happen overnight. It takes a long time to put on the weight. You know, you don't just wake up 20 pounds heavier. It takes time to gain 20 pounds. It might take you a month, it might take you six months, but it does not happen overnight that you gain a bunch of weight or 100 pounds. You don't put that on overnight or in a week even. So it does take time to lose the weight as well. And one of the first things that I remember doing was, okay, so now I was loving myself, but I was also um, not, I decided that I wasn't going to stuff myself anymore, that I was gonna stop eating as soon as I felt full because that was something that my husband had mentioned in the car. I remember when the conversation happened, it was in the car. So, and he was saying, you know, you're always complaining that you feel stuffed after you eat. Why don't you just stop stuffing yourself? And so I thought, well, he has a point, you know, like up until that point, I had always eaten until it hurt, like literally, like I, I didn't know what it was to just be satisfied. I always ate till I felt guilty. Like I had gotten used to living with having guilty feelings after every meal that I ate. Like my husband and I, you know, we were young and dating and so we ate out all the time. We were always at Chili's or we were always at some restaurant out on a date getting lunch or something. But we especially used to eat at Chili's a lot. And I remember for the first time not finishing my entire plate and stopping halfway or three quarters of the way through the meal and saying, you know what? I actually do feel satisfied. Like I feel comfortably full. I think I'll stop eating the rest of my plate, even though in the past what I would have normally done was finished the whole plate and then ordered dessert. But I thought, no, you know what, I'm actually full. Let me stop and take the rest of it home. So I started to do that. That was one of the first steps that I did was taking food home with me and not finishing it all at the restaurant. That was another big step towards my losing the weight and keeping it off. Did I start ordering salads and ordering things that were super healthy? maybe a little bit, but I always ordered something that I wanted to eat. Like if I didn't want to eat the salad, I didn't force myself to eat a salad. I would, if I wanted the, Mommy. if I wanted a burger, I ordered a burger, but maybe I didn't order the fattiest burger on the menu. Maybe I didn't order the healthiest burger on the menu. I ordered what would have satisfied me emotionally, <laughs> you know, like, okay, I, maybe I didn't get to have the fattiest burger, but I got to at least eat a burger. And you know, I didn't limit myself to, um, to the healthy burger on the menu. And if I felt full after eating three quarters of the burger, I didn't finish the, the end of my meal. I would leave it on the plate. And that was a big deal for me to leave food on the plate because I was so used to having to gobble it all up and eat it all. And so that was huge, stopping that. And I also, um, instead of ordering sodas, I switched to unsweet iced tea because I had always heard bad things about diet soda, although I do enjoy diet soda and I did drink diet soda, um, but a lot of times I ordered unsweet iced tea. So that's something to consider, ordering water or ordering unsweet iced tea, or I really love Perrier or carbonated waters, waters or soda waters or flavored waters. So that's something that you might wanna consider switching to. Instead of drinking like a glass of juice, I would fill up half of my glass with juice and the other half with water. So that was a huge thing for me. What's up baby, what's up? Little baby wants all of mommy's attention. So that was another change that I did. 
Um, and also, I remember like my family would always get cake or ice cream or stuff like that. If it was a dessert that I was like mediocre on, I used to like eat it up in the past. But I started saying no to foods that weren't really a huge deal for me, like cheese. I didn't really love, like some people really love cheese and I would never suggest giving up cheese if you really love cheese. Um, but for me, cheese was one of those foods that I could live without. Or maybe you don't really care for cream cheese, or maybe you don't really care for um, ice cream, or maybe you don't really care for, you know, certain candies. Like, don't eat those. Why are you putting those into your body if you don't even like what you're eating, if it's not like something you really love? So I think that's another thing that I changed. I started becoming a pickier eater. So that cut back on calories. And, and little by little, the weight started to come off with just these few things that I started changing. Becoming pickier, like, so like I wasn't really big on cheese, so I didn't order cheese on my burgers. So that was a way that I was missing calories without make, and, and it wasn't a huge sacrifice for me. I didn't really like mayonnaise. I, I started cutting mayonnaise out of my sandwiches and I really loved ketchup and mustard and I, I would load up on those type of things. But I did love oil, so I never really cut back on my oil or maybe, or if I did cut back, you know, it was just like, you know, don't go heavy on the oil, just go medium on the oil, you know, like, because at Subway, I used to put vinegar and oil on my sandwiches, but I would just tell them, you know, not too much oil. So, so I was still able to get the taste of the oil on my sub sandwich, but, but it wasn't over the top, you know? Like, I used to love cake. When my family would bring home cake, instead of eating like half the cake, which is what I used to do, like in the middle of the night, late at night when everyone was sleeping, I would go out to the living room and watch TV and eat half the cake and then feel depressed about it and be upset that I wasn't being able to wear jeans that I really wanted to be able to wear or something, you know. What, what I started doing was allowing myself to have that cake and not feel guilty, except that instead of eating half of the cake, I would have just one serving of cake, like one slice. And I would tell myself, Jenny, you can have another slice tomorrow, first thing in the morning, if that's what you want, Jenny, but do not eat half the cake. And so I would promise myself, tomorrow, Jenny, you're gonna eat a slice of cake for breakfast. And so that's what I would do. Like, so that evening, I would just have one slice of cake because that's all I really needed, you know, and I, was, it, and I wasn't even hungry. I was, I was fine going to bed, you know, and, but like giving myself that promise that that cake would be waiting for me in the morning and I could have it for breakfast or something like that, that meant a lot to me and I really followed through with that and it helped me to stop eating half of a cake. And so that was a huge deal. Um, so sometimes I did have the cake for breakfast and sometimes I didn't. Sometimes I wanted, you know, an actual breakfast and I found that, that that craving wasn't there the next morning. If the craving was still there the next morning, then by all means, I let myself have that cake. So I think that's important to um, allow yourself to have something that you feel or think is forbidden and allow yourself to enjoy it and not feel guilty about it. And that, that was huge for me. My husband's a tax accountant now. He works at a CPA firm, but when we were in college, one of his jobs was he was a manager at McDonald's and I got to eat there for free all the time. And so, you know, but how was I gonna be losing weight if I was eating Big Macs every single day? And so, cause I would, you know, when I would get hungry for lunch, I would go to McDonald's. So what I used to do was I would order a salad at McDonald's and the McDonald's salads are awesome, or at least they were, I don't know how they are today. I'm trying to be on a budget and not eat out so much. Um, but I had a free salad at McDonald's and I lost weight eating salads at McDonald's. Now that wasn't the only thing I was eating. I was eating food at home and food out, but I ate out a lot in college and I still lost weight. So by stopping when you're full, that's a big deal. By not eating half the cake when you're at home late at night, that's a big deal. By not drinking sugary drinks all day, you know, I would water down my juices by filling it only with a quarter or half a cup of juice and the rest of it would be water or drinking unsweet tea or diet diet drink but again diet drinks aren't the best for you like I would definitely try to drink more water and more unsweet iced tea but I did eat the salads and I lost weight eating the salads at McDonald's so um, if I really was craving like a milkshake or something like that or french fries um, I used to get the kid size and a lot of times I didn't finish it I only drank what I needed to be satisfied 
Um, and then I would always order the kid size french fries and I would or, like always order the kid size burgers. Everything was kid size at McDonald's because because I knew McDonald's was high calorie food. So if I did indulge in something other than a salad or fruit or yogurt from McDonald's, then I definitely would suggest sticking with kid size portions. So that is another tip towards my losing weight and maintaining my weight as Princess Jasmine was doing that. And another thing I would say is just portion control. I really started to pay attention like very strongly, especially as I started to lose weight, I started to pay more and more attention to my fullness, how I was feeling, like was I satisfied? And if I was satisfied, I would go without. I didn't have to count calories that way so long as I paid attention to my body and really listened to when I was full. I didn't have to count calories. Oh, and I never ate like a big meal before I went to bed. You know, and I tried to, to make healthier, wiser choices, you know? Like, so I was extremely conscientious of how my body felt like if I could get by without food, then I went without, like I didn't, I, I stopped eating all the time. Like always my mind used to be focused on food and I started focusing on other things for the first time. Like I started getting interested in my life, in my classes at my university that I was taking classes at. I started to care about other things that I started to realize were, were more important than food. I was really into my boyfriend at that time who is now my husband. I was way into him. I was just more, my mind was consumed with things that other than food like I was into my classes I was concerned with where I was going in my life and what I wanted to do and what I wanted to become and so food wasn't you know and and stressing about my body became less important you know not that you shouldn't be concerned about your body and I was concerned about my physique but you know I was stopping but for the first time I was actually doing something about it you know and by by you know not finishing that cake at night so so because I was taking care of myself, I was able to allow myself to then focus on other things because now that wasn't so much of a worry or a concern because I knew that I was doing what I needed to do, you know, to take care, better care of myself. And, and at that time, I still didn't know a whole lot about, you know, almond butter being better than peanut butter or, you know, like protein or why I needed protein or carbs. I didn't understand all of those things. I was, I was just so happy that I was losing weight and I was happy that I wasn't stuffing myself anymore and I was fitting into my clothes better. I started being able to enjoy shopping more so I started getting more into my fashion and enjoying that part of my life and enjoying college and everything and so that's how it happened. It was almost like a snowball effect for me. Leave if you ha if you still are having questions about this weight loss thing, by all means leave them in the comments below. <laughs> Um, but as far as exercise, I guess I was, I was active in that I was walking around a lot during the day because I was on the University of Central Florida campus and you do a lot of walking from building to building and class to class. So I guess that was my exercise was walking slash cardio. Um, I did, you know, run on the elliptical a few times, but I wasn't like hardcore at the gym every week. No, nothing like that. I wish that I had been better about exercise. I got into exercise later in my life after I did Princess Jasmine, after I was a retired Disney princess. That's when I really got into exercise. But yeah, but just, you know, not stuffing myself before I went to bed, being mindful of how full I was and doing my best not to eat when I was not hungry. That was a big deal for me, was not eating when I wasn't hungry. I had always eaten whether I was hungry or not, but to actually stop eating when you're not hungry, that you'll lose weight doing that too. For me to go like an hour or even two hours without eating was just not, I didn't I didn't even know what that was like back then, like before I started losing weight. And all of a sudden I was keeping my mind busy and active. And one of my favorite snacks that I used to have when I was doing Princess Jasmine um, at the University of Central Florida um, in between meals is a chocolate milk. I would go down to the convenience store and get you know, a thing of Nestle Quick or low fat or fat free chocolate milk. And that was a snack. I would have, it, I would drink about 16 ounces, like, you know, like a 16 ounce bottle, two cups of chocolate milk, fat free chocolate milk. I mean, I loved that. I was getting that chocolate fix. I was getting my, I was getting my chocolate fix and I was getting protein and calcium from the chocolate milk. I was getting protein and chocolate from my chocolate drink. So, 
That was one of my favorite Princess Jasmine snacks. This is my daughter and I all day long. We just love each other and, and we cuddle and we just love each other, don't we? Mm, yeah. And that's and by doing those things, that's kind of how I maintained my weight doing Princess Jasmine. Um, you know, I wasn't really huge on my breakfast. Like, I didn't have to have breakfast first thing in the morning. I think I would wait until I really felt hungry. And for me, I didn't really start to feel hungry. I didn't really start to feel hungry until after 9.30. So I wouldn't eat until after 9.30 because I was, again, I was really big on don't eat until you're hungry. So breakfast, I remember my breakfast would be like toast or something like that, toast with jam. You know, something small, nothing too huge, fruit, fruit. I, I used to eat a lot of fruit because fruit was one of those foods. Yeah? What are you saying? You want to play just for like 15 more minutes so I can finish this? Yeah. Okay. Go play. Fruit was one of those foods that I let myself have as much as I wanted. Fruit was one of the things that I let myself stuff myself on. That, or, or salad. Salad was another food. Or vegetables. Those were foods that I would let myself go crazy or nuts with. So, um, a lot of times when I was doing the Princess Jasmine character, if I was eating out, like with my family, I would order a salad, like a chicken salad of some kind. Um, you know, I, I didn't go too heavy on the dressing, or I usually had like a vinaigrette dressing on my salad, but I would let myself eat that salad guilt-free. So there, there were definitely things that I just didn't allow myself to feel guilty about eating, and fruit and salad and lettuce and vegetables, th that was one thing that I just said, you know what, I don't feel guilty about overeating those foods. So, but like breads or desserts or sugary things, like I did say, you know what, unless you're hungry, don't eat those. So, that, those were ways that I kept the weight off doing Princess Jasmine. Um, but I remember one of the meals that I used to eat like every day when I was Princess Jasmine, for lunch I would have a six inch turkey sub, no cheese a light on the oil and vinegar and I would have as many veggies on that as I wanted and then I would usually have like a water or an unsweet iced tea or a diet coke. I would usually have a snack like some sun chips. Sun chips was one of my favorite chips to eat when I was doing Princess Jasmine but again I didn't overdo it. You know I, I just had enough to feel full and then I was done and if I wanted something sweet I would have like some fruit strawberries or an apple and I ate lunch every day I never skipped meals I always made sure I had lunch because I would be angry if I did not have my food you know and then for snacks I always had lots of fluids I would have like Powerade as one of my snacks because Disney always gave us free Powerade when you were a character um, the yellow kind so that it wouldn't stain your costume as bad if you spilled it on yourself <laughs> My daughter has decided that she's done with me filming this YouTube video. I'm taking too long, she says. So I think that's all I'm going to say for now. If you have any more questions, um, leave them in the comments below. Again, I'm not some fitness expert or nutritionist, so I'm just telling you what I used to do to when I was losing weight and then what I continued to do while I was doing Princess Jasmine to help me maintain my weight. My daughter is done. Baby girl, I'm done. So if you like this video, please like it. Please, sh please share this video if you think it'll help somebody. Please subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this. So I hope this video shed a lot of light on how I maintained my weight. I didn't, and a lot of the princesses, they all, um, they, they all ate. Nobody was anorexic that I knew of and nobody was bulimic. I always saw all the princesses eating. They seemed healthy. They were very active um, and into exercise more than I was. So they were better about that. Disney liked to hire girls who had real looking bodies, I felt. You know, like realistic looking bodies anyway. It wasn't, they didn't hire like supermodel stick figure bodies. They, they were like normal girls who just had slender physiques. I, maintain, I was able to maintain a size 4 through 8 while I was doing Princess Jasmine, which were the size of the Jasmine pants. So anyway, I hope you guys have a great day. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.